So let's go through, go through exactly what we did. We started off by drawing our first frame, then we drew our last frame, then we filled in the points between, and then after that we drew out the first frame of the impact because we knew that the impact was going to be at this point, and then we drew the last frame, and then we interpreted in between. Uh, this is a more simplified version of keyframing. Um, for a beginner, I feel that it, it gets the fundamentals of 2D animation across well enough for you to pick up a pen or uh, use a mouse and start drawing straight away. Hi there, my name is Hayden Falzon from FalzonFantasy.com and today we're going to be doing a tutorial on how to create like a pulse energy blast or almost like a um, one of those plasma shots in Halo 3 in the 2D uh, grease pencil in Blender 2.8. If you haven't already uh, dabbled around in 2D, I highly suggest watching my beginner 2D tutorial on Blender, a link for which will be in the description. Um, so let's get straight to it. So I've got my basic Blender file open here right now. And I just want to start up a new 2D scene. So I'm just going to come up here to File, New, and 2D Animation. And it's going to prompt me saying save changes to Untitled. You don't need to because there's nothing in there. So we've created a new 2D animation scene. So all that, that means is it's set up our camera and our uh, scene to be able to accept 2D input. So in this case, it's created a stroke and it's put that object into draw mode. So that means I can now draw on my screen like this. Now, always keep in mind that we always wanna make sure that our little cursor here is at, at the beginning of our animation. Because if we set it to over here and we start drawing, then when we go back, we're gonna notice that that uh, input that we've just created is no longer there. And that's just uh, because the information has been saved on the frame where that blue little line is. So let's, that's just something to keep in mind. So to begin, we're going to just do a little bit of a draft sketch at the beginning. So I'm gonna come over here to my layers and I'm gonna rename this layer by double clicking and I'm gonna rename this draft. I'm just gonna lay out a few points uh, for reference and that's all. It's always a good idea to plan these sort of shots. So I want my uh, energy blast to kind of originate from here. And let's just say I have an object over here that I wanted to hit. Let's just say it's roughly here. So that means I want my energy blast to originate from here, come along here and then essentially explode or, or do whatever you would like. For example, it could just dissipate, disappear, uh, things like that. But I have a rough estimate of where I want it to end in my scene. So I'm just gonna use this hand to move my scene around. I'm also going to press this magnifying glass to zoom out. And I'm only using these because I'm using a XP pen surface at the moment. Otherwise you'd be using your normal blender controls, of course. So now that I've got my draft layer set, uh, we don't really need to do anything else to it other than let's just lock it for now. So that means I can't edit it anymore. So it's set. And then I'm gonna create a new, uh, new layer by pressing this plus button, double clicking to rename this. And I'm gonna rename this energy Blast. Okay, so now that we've set up our energy blast layer, uh, I wanna create a few materials that I'm gonna be using throughout. So I'm just gonna come down here to my materials tab. And as you can see, we've already got a fair few materials, but I'm just gonna create a new one by pressing this plus, then new, and I'm gonna call this blue, I'll just call it energy because we don't really want to uh, set its color in stone, do we? If we want to go back and 
edit this a little bit down the road, we can do that. So we'll start off blue, but then if we want to make it green, purple, yellow, you, whatever, we can change it later. And that's the beauty of digital art. It's always iterative. Uh, it's not set in stone, so to speak. So I'm going to press enter to set that name. And right now I think we should set it as a fill. And it's going to be a solid. And we're going to set the color. So I'm just going to, clicking on this, I'm just going to set the value of it. And I'm going to set the color of it. So I'm just going to set it to this nice blue here. Excellent. So now that we've done this, we've got our energy and material. As you can see, it's also being shown up here. That means it's our current material selected. So if I draw now, uh, we are drawing with this material, which is exactly what we want. So our next step is to draw the first frame of our animation. So we're going to choose where in time we want this animation to begin. So in my case, I would like it to begin around frame 30, because 30 seems like a good number. This can always be changed though, so it doesn't matter. And then I'm also going to just draw very slightly like a, almost like a, a raindrop coming out of our point, okay? So this is going to be like the initial state of our blast. I'm also going to create a new material and I'm going to, I'm going to call this, so plus and then new material, I'm going to call this sparks. And I'm going to set this to a stroke. So I'm going to keep it as a stroke and I'm not going to hit fill and I'm going to set the stroke color to, and after that, we're going to set this mode type from line to dots. And I'll show you why we're going to do that. If I just keep that as line and I do like a very sharp thing like this, we're going to notice these points on our stroke that are a bit, yeah. Uh, this is, by the way, being fixed in the next update, I believe, 2.83. However, I don't think it shipped with the latest 2.8. 2.7 which is the one I'm currently running on um, so that's this is just a little workaround for that but you're not going to need to memorize this because the fix is in the works so I'm going to set a mode type from line boxes and then I'm going to come up here to my brushes I'm just going to change the brush to my F ink pen and then I'm going to come down to stroke and set the iterations to be a little bit higher now, if I do this now, we're going to notice that it uh, it doesn't exactly follow it. And that's just because we have a simplify um, parameter that's set. We just reduce that. And what we should see is that we're getting these really nice. Should be getting a really nice result. Let me just um, increase the subdivision steps. It's a bit of a um, high performance fix to the sharp edges. If you do want the sharp edges, by all means, keep it online. Uh, if you're working on 2.83 and above, this issue should be fixed and you shouldn't have to change anything. This is only if you're on a older version of Blender that doesn't have that fix implemented just yet. Uh, so now that we've set up our tool and our material, I'm going to come back to my my little uh, initial frame, and I'm just going to create almost like a muzzle flash as such. Maybe I just want to these lines emanating. You don't have to be too pretty in this part, uh, especially because uh, every frames really it's going it's going to happen really fast. Uh, so we can get away with a lot of mistakes sometimes. I'm not saying you know aim for 
making mistakes, but we can get away with them. Um, so I've done that now. Our next job is that we're going to set our last frame because I always like to work from the initial frame to the last frame just before impact in these types of shots. Uh, and that just gives you a good idea as to what's happening in between. It's almost like telling a story. You can't really tell a story without a beginning or an end. So I'm just gonna make sure that my energy is picked. So just from that little menu there, and then I'm just going to making sure that I'm keeping an eye on what this looks like. I'm also going to uh, buffer this speed, buffer the speed. I'm gonna move this little blue line down here just so it's in a different area. We can always change this later. And then I'm gonna make sure by drawing very carefully something that looks very similar. So I might add a few trails to it as such. I'm not happy with that, especially that area just there. Let's see if we can fix that. So let me just zoom in. Oops, see what happened there because I was on the wrong frame. Just zoom in as such. Now I might have to restart that frame. So, and I wanna kind of Have something like that. And let me just get the eraser here to erase that little globulous point that was sticking out of it. And then set it back to the pen. Gonna zoom out. And now we've set that, we can see that there, we can see our beginning and our end of the sort of the travel of our object. Uh, we haven't animated the actual impact yet. That's gonna be the next part after we've animated this. So, uh, our next step is we're gonna turn on onion skinning. So to do that, it's very simple. We just come over here to our a little squiggly line, and that, all that is is just our object data, and click on those that little ball, which is the second icon within that menu. And that's just turning on onion skinning. Sometimes you won't be able to see it, and usually the case will be because uh, this little icon is going to be unchecked. Um, this is essentially just a viewport overlay menu, and it, you're able to customize what you're able to see within the viewport. So useful but a bit intermediate. So now that we've got our onion skin it shows where our object is going which means we can then interpret it as artists as to what should be in between. So I'm just going to roughly go in between these two frames maybe at frame 50 and I'm going to to the best of my ability interpret what I believe should be between the frames. So making sure that my materials on energy I'm then going to, looking at this, just kind of create something that I think looks good. Now, as you can see, I've got this little tail on the energy blast. And in this frame, it's going like this. Sorry, let me get a different... In this frame, it is going like that, isn't it? But in this frame, it is going like this. Uh, and all that is, is just adding a bit of variance as well as sort of like a wave motion to our energy. And it's gonna add a lot of character to the actual final animation. Uh, it's also, Quite a common technique in character drawing. You always see people have lines that alternate like this when drawing limbs and things uh, because it gives a more naturalistic look. There are very rarely straight lines in nature. And because energy is at its very core natural, uh, we want to kind of embellish that in the character. 
So now that I've done this little part here, I'm going to change my material to sparks because our sparks haven't finished yet. Because we started with sparks, we have to, you know, they have to go somewhere. So maybe what they do is they kind of, they follow along and they're kind of like dragged by this energy. Like so, and let me just, and maybe the sh initial shock wave of the energy blast has expanded a little bit. So I'm just going to, but it's also faded because we're not, um, let's just see, maybe something like this. So I'm keeping it simple. Let's take a look. So let me play it. I'm going to press Alt A. Yours may be spacebar. I'm using a different key setup. Yeah, I can kind of see it. What we definitely want is we want to. I want to kind of create a transition from these energy sort of blasts, these sparks, to these ones here, which are being dragged by the uh, actual energy ball. So. To do that, I'm just going to set another keyframe in between these two. So we've set one keyframe here, then we're going to set another one in between there. And what I'm just going to do is just going to play around with shape in order to get a nice transition between those two. So uh, keep you on sparks because they're the ones I really want to focus on here. I'm okay with the energy ball for now. I just want to focus on these. So between these, we kind of want to follow the basic shape and kind of get it so that it's nearly getting into position for the next shot. Uh, this one here, kind of want to follow that one as such, maybe a bit, a bit longer. We also want to kind of provide little offshoots for it, that it's initial Um, trajectory was taking it on. And we'll also do little interstitial uh, remnants of the initial blast itself. Something like this. So we got this sort of curving motion coming into it. We've got this, this arc. So we've seen this arc across and then coming back into it. I probably want to exaggerate this arc a little bit more to make it feel like there's a bit more energy behind it going out. So I'm just going to grab the eraser here. And oops, as you can see on the wrong frame, Always important to check that. So I'm just going to grab the eraser and just kind of do that. And then I'm just going to grab the pen again. And then I'm going to kind of bring this out a little bit more. Something like this, getting this, this wave. I feel that's a more just wave. So let's check this out. So, we, so I'm really liking this arch. I think it looks more energetic and we're getting the uh, sort of initial inertia of uh, that initial arc into it. So let's just take a look. Looking good. See, I may still want to play around with this, maybe make it a bit more concave to make it feel like a more vortex sort of feeling. But for now, we're just going to leave it as is and just continue on with the tutorial. So I'm just going to fill in the blanks. That's all it is really, just filling in the blanks. And I'm also going to um, create little offshoots like this. And now that we've done that, we can go back to our energy and we want a energy sort of blast between here. So I'm, I'm thinking roughly here and 
we kind of want it to, oops, kind of want it to feel like it's disconnected. Always think of a raindrop in these sort of things. And as you can see, the initial glob that I've created is a bit too big on this one other than this one. So what I can choose to do is either edit this one and this one or edit uh, this one. So what I might try and do is edit this one. So one way that we can go about it is redraw it. Another thing that we can do is come up here to draw and choose sculpt mode. And then we're getting all these tools. So for example, you get smooth, thickness, strength, randomize, grab, push, twist, pinch, and clone. Now the one we're looking for is pinch. And what that's gonna do is just gonna you know, make everything a little bit tighter. So I'm just going to just tighten that up a little bit. Maybe you also tighten these up. There we go. And that's now matching. See how that, if we were to draw a circle there and a circle there, they would be roughly matching. And that's what we're looking for. We're looking for that consistency. Okay, whoops, not draw object mode. We want draw mode. So let's take a look. Perfect. Now, of course, the speed isn't perfect. So let's start working on that. Now, like I like to, once I've got a roughly the, the frames that I'm gonna be working with, I like to start to deal with the speed. So I'm just going to select all of these. So I'm just going to, ugh, let me use my mouse instead. So I'm just gonna click and drag using my left, my right mouse button for that one. And then I'm gonna set my cursor to the first frame of our initial animation. And then I'm gonna press S, S for scale. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna scale the keyframes relative to the position of that blue bar. So I'm just gonna scale them down something like this. So 30 to 50 frames, 20 frames, a bit long for something like an energy blast, but uh, we're just gonna do it now for editing purposes. So, in fact, I may even squash that down even more, maybe 10 frames, something like, something like there. Ooh, it's even, see something like energy is really, really fast. So we wanna go even faster. So let's just scale it even further down. And now that we're scaling it really far down, let's zoom up by grabbing the end of this and just sliding it in and moving it into our editing area. I'm also gonna set the end frame to about 40. So I'm just gonna come down here and press 40 and then press, and the start frame I'm gonna to set to 29. And that way when we press play, it's gonna loop between those two regions, uh, which is really good for viewing our animation in whole. Excellent. So now that we've got our energy, I'm gonna create another frame uh, in between here, I believe. In fact, I'm just gonna set this frame, oops, not like that. I have to deselect, so let's just press A and to deselect all. And then select that frame and move it there. I'm moving by pressing G, G for grab. And then I really want to focus on this area here, uh, the time between these two points. So let's get started. So remember, we're going from this, this direction of wave to this direction of wave. So between those two points, we've got a rather flat wave. So Maybe just draw that globulus first. And then I'm just gonna draw a flat two sort of tails coming off the end of it. 
something like that. And then let's also add in our final, I think the sparks will have dissipated by the final frame. So let me just move these in as such. So now they're kind of, they're gonna be sort of like a vortex behind it now because they're, they were pulled in from out, like a far out, and then they're getting pulled further and further in like a, like a maelstrom. Take a look at the animation, looking good. So our next point is the point of impact. And that's sort of when everything hits off. So right after this frame here, we can assume, because we can't really fit another frame in between 34 and 35. That's just not how frames work. If we wanted to do that, we would increase the frame rate of our initial project. So we would come up here uh, to our uh, sorry, here to our project and then just change the frame rate to whatever we want. We can set it to custom. Uh, mine set to a stock standard US 24 frames per second. Technically, I should be using 25 because I'm in Australia, but that's how we're doing it now. So there's going to be 24 frames per second. And we can assume at this point here that the energy bolt has hit something because that's where we've designated it to hit something. So now that we've assumed that that's hit something at this point here, we are gonna we can draw for that. So if it hits here, let's just say, now also think, think of it like a, a water droplet. It's all, it all comes back to water when it comes to energy sometimes. Um, selecting my energy, and we're gonna kind of create like a cavity like this, it's like a splash into a pond. And I'm also gonna create something like this. So it's like splashing against something. And then we're gonna also add some sparks to here keep it as random as you like you know we are talking about a pretty chaotic impact yeah you know it's not a masterpiece let's put it that way but it gets the point across and that's what we're looking for Yeah, I'd probably change, see how, what I would change about this. It's just kind of get those to kind of fill in like that. Something like that. Okay, so now we've got our first frame of our impact state. Now let's draw the last frame. So let's come over here to maybe 38 or 39. It's not the last frame per se, it's, but it's the last key frame. So the last key frame you probably want Let's actually set it to 38 because it's going to be a short-lived impact. And I'm going to zoom out. Something like this, it's gonna come out here, here. So we're just following our sort of trajectory that we've instigated at the beginning. So it's gonna like pop. And then, let's get my energy and I kind of want to just kind of have like a, a very small splat now. 
something like that. So we can view it now and we can kind of see kind of what we're getting at here. We still need to fill in the information a little bit, kind of give our eyes that transitional information, but we can kind of fill it in already where we're going. So now that we've done that, let's just pick maybe, let's go 37. And I'm just going to very roughly draw in a frame just of the impact growing a little bit bigger. And I'm just going to move the last frame somewhere like there. And then in between there, I kind of want to finish it up. So I'd kind of dissolve this bit here. So make that like teensy and then have it sort of shrink back in on itself. Now, you would want to work on this a little bit more than I am, but for the purposes of this tutorial, I think it serves its purpose. So we can kind of see how it kind of grows and then gets smaller. And we just want to add the spark effects now. Go here, get our sparks. So we kind of want the sparks to have kind of dissipated at this point. So their entry point is pretty low. So not much left at the point of impact, but they're sort of traveling within the actual mass itself. And then outside the mass. As such, so I'm just going to, as you can see what I'm doing is I'm starting from a different point, from a point further out, but then as soon as I reach it, I kind of want to follow along my initial point. It kind of gives the, the feeling of continuity. And then you would shrink those points down further and further until you get nothing and it feels like it's almost dissipating into the air. So that's looking fairly decent at this point. Uh, we don't have any of our energy here, so I'm just going to fill that in. And there we go. Very, very, very basic. So let's take a look at our layers and let's actually turn off our uh, energy, our draft. And then I'm just going to press play and take a look at that. Now, the great thing about Blender, because it's 3D, what we can actually do is we can actually integrate this animation into a 3D scene. And what I, I can show you what I mean by that. So let me just pause that now. And let me go out of draw mode, go into object mode. Let me just save this very quickly. And okay. So let's create like a point for it to actually hit. So I'm just gonna come over here to my wall. I know that it hits roughly here. And I zoom that up a little bit. Let me set a material to this. Let's make it you know, something like that. And it kind of hits our, our three-dimensional wall now. It looks like it, at least from our perspective. Now let's uh, create like a little barrel for it to shoot out of. So let me get a cylinder, rotate it by 90 degrees, pressing R then 90 to rotate 90. And then I'm just going to position that roughly here. And I probably want to uh, put it back in Y space. So I'm just going to put it behind it as such, 
go into edit mode uh, because when you're dealing with 2D and 3D, you have to think about perspective a lot more because we're faking perspective even in 3D. So it can be a little bit more difficult, but oftentimes it's it's just a matter of just zooming it in, in and out in Y space. Zooming, sorry, moving in and out of Y space. And I'm just going to create a quick barrel as such. So I, to do that, I'm selecting the face in face select mode, pressing E to extrude, scaling it, and then I'm then extruding it again, and it's going to extrude along the normal by default. And what that's done now is I've created like this barrel. So let me just move it like so, so moving it like there. So at the initial point of impact, impact of firing, uh, it's here. I'm going to set a keyframe, so I rotation, and then after it's fired to roughly there, I'm just going to rotate it. I want to see my 3D cursor. Okay, let's set the, so let's go out of grease pencil to dope sheet. Let's set the location and the rotation, excuse me. So lock rot and then come over here and rotate lock rot. So we should see that sort of like that pull back of the muzzle. And let's do something like that. Okay, looking really good. And of course, what we can do with this is we can actually add some effects to it. So if I go here to this little magic wand, add effect, making sure that the stroke's selected, of course. Let's add like a little glow to it. So I'm gonna press Shift and Z to go into my render mode. Uh, it's gonna increase the radius, maybe threshold. And let's also turn off our, our onion skin. That looks really good. Uh, let's also add maybe a wave distortion, eh? That's, you know, it's all about playing around with it. Now we don't want something like this. Uh, we probably want to decrease the amplitude. Maybe set the amplitude to one. Uh, if you haven't already, be sure to check out my website, foulsonfantasy.com. It's a still a work in progress. It's just essentially going to be a, a hub for all my creative works that I'm working on at the moment. I've got a couple of games as well as a comic in the works. Uh, I'm very excited to release it and share it with everyone, utilizing Blender big time. So be on the lookout for tutorials and devlogs in regards to those. Um, and yeah, I guess that wraps up this tutorial. But thank you so much for watching. I hope that you've enjoyed. I hope you've learned something. If you have, give it a like. And if you'd like to see more content like this, smash that subscribe and bell button. Thank you so much for watching. My name's Hayden Falzon from FalzonFantasy.com, signing off.